Move up, Steinbeck. Yes, I know. Oh, it's good to see you this morning, too. Good morning, everybody. And please don't spill this. I do want to wear clean clothes. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cameras and Coffee. And today, we're going to talk about, oh, as you can see, it is winter here. So I have donned my winter haircut because it turns out that a knit cap is better at keeping my head warm than hair now. So, um, oh yes, I know pup, it's so wintry outside. The mountains are all nice and snowy and no, you can't go up them just yet because uh, you're bolder than I am. Anyway, okay, to business. So in today's video, we've got two things to talk about. Olympus and Pentax, the two biggest and most important camera companies out there, of course. Um, so we're going to talk about Olympus first. And actually, I guess we should call it J-I-P-O-M-D now or something like that. So the, there's a Petapixel article link in the description. J-I-P to ditch Olympus name, focus on high-end MFT cameras report. We knew they were going to ditch the Olympus name. That was never part of the deal. They bought OMD and Pen and Zuiko. So that's what they're sticking with. I'm going to assume that Zuiko will continue to be the lenses. Uh, apparently, they, I don't know what the future is for Pen. Uh, and then OMD, I have to assume, will continue to be the camera name. Now, there's an interesting thing in this article that um, is, is, shines a lot of light onto JIP's plans for what used to be Olympus will going forward be something else. And that is, let's see. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So there's actually a couple of interesting things. One of them is that JIP doesn't know what their brand name is going to be. There's a, a sentence, a couple of sentences in, is in, in here. OM Digital Solutions will be using the Olympus brand from its establishment. The exact duration of use is currently undecided. So at some point, Olympus will be phased out as a brand. They're not going cold turkey. Not sure I would have made that same decision. Um, having been through a company with a name change and seeing that that doesn't necessarily uh, do good things for the brand long term. So then the next sentence right after that in the next paragraph is long term OM Digital Solutions will consider developing a brand name that is familiar and resonates with customers and the Olympus legacy. There's lots of different things that could be. They could call the cameras Mitaki. Oh darn it, I am blanking on his first name. They could call it I'll overlay it here. The first name of the guy who designed many of the Olympus cameras. That would, nothing wrong with that. Um, there are lots of other things. There are probably some old, um, old trademarks and sales marks that Olympus owns that they haven't maintained that are out there that they could use and probably bought with the, the division, things like that. So at any rate, basically what, the takeaway from that, those two quotes are, is that the plans for the brand are still in development, but that they're working on coming up with some sort of long-term plan. Now, the next thing in here that's really way more interesting is um, later on in the paragraph, in, a, uh, in the article, in a paragraph that starts, in a separate report, the Olympus Europe manager, Albert Marty, told Fotolari that OM Digital Solutions would focus its efforts on the mid to high end range. Okay, now that call, the, the paragraph goes on to say that calls into question the pen line, which was the entry level brand. I don't think that's the case. It's really easy to shift names between lines. They can do that really easily. They can keep the pen name and just make that the mid tier camera instead of the entry level camera. Anyway, what realistically, whatever the company's lowest tier is, that's their entry level camera. But the most important thing here that's telling about the plans for the future are that uh, JIP is going to focus on the high, mid to high end range of the cameras. Now, what that means is traditionally, camera makers have seen this progression where they would bring people in with the lower tier cameras, whether it's a point and shoot or a range finder or a bridge camera, whatever it is. And then they would graduate them up to the higher end cameras, the SLRs, and then the higher end SLRs, 
over the course of that consumer's purchasing period, which is generally early 20s until late 50s, early 60s, something like that. So with the idea that you build a brand by building consumers who will buy your brand for about four decades and help them continually move into more expensive higher end products. The fact that JIP is going to do away with the entry level caliber cameras and focus on the mid to high end cameras means that they are not going to be fostering long term um, customer development in that manner because they aren't going to have an entry level offering. So that tells me, or as somebody who works in marketing, if I were working for a competing company, I would interpret that as a sign that JIP is planning to develop exceedingly good cameras that they're going to use to take market share away from other companies in the mid to high end range. And also what it tells me is JIP is very savvy and they recognize that the low end range is going to go the way of the dodo thanks to cell phones sooner rather than later. Realistically, entry level cameras like the four digit Canon series, which would be the Rebels here in North America or the Kiss in Japan, as well as some of the other really, uh, the, the, the four digit series, I think also for Nikon and some of the others, um, will probably at some point in the next five or so years be phased out simply because the people who are using cell phones or the people who would buy those will just switch to cell phones for good. I mean, heck, my brother, I remember he and I talking about it. He switched to a cell phone about eight years ago and has never looked back. And he was exactly the kind of person who would have bought one of those entry level cameras. So at any rate, um, so I think JIP is making a very savvy decision in that because it does two things. It positions them well to be buffered against the loss of revenue due to the further transition away from standalone cameras to cell phones for the majority of users. And it also gives them a good market position to take market share away from the mid range and high end cameras of their competing uh, class of cameras. So I got to say, the more that I read about JIP's actions following the purchase of Olympus, the more optimistic I am about the future of that brand. And the more I think that the people at JIP went into it with a really good plan and that they really know what they're doing. Um, so I think for those of you out there who are Olympus shooters, uh, I don't think you need to worry too much about your brand's future. I think you're going to have a, a long and healthy brand life ahead of you. So with, oh, I am trying to drink my coffee. Please do not, you don't want it spilled on you. No, you don't. No, you don't get to kiss me. You ate a rat yesterday. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is from the phoblographer, a portmanteau I always have trouble pronouncing and it's about pen tax and it's an opinion piece zero fact all speculation in this article just going to establish that up front it's titled opinion pen tax has apparently realized that DSLRs can capture video I'll believe it when I see it um, at any rate uh, there's a link again to, in the video's description to this article if you'd like to read it so what my my number one complaint my in fact what i don't i love my k1 it's my I, it's my favorite camera bar none and uh the only complaint that i have about it is that the video quality is awful and i've always kind of chalked that up to the undersized computer that the camera has and probably just the fact that processing 4k video would not be doable with the the camera's physical infrastructure um so that, that said, um, Pentax has always lagged in video. As long as they've been making DSLRs, they've sort of treated video like the forgotten child. And, and the opinion here comes from an anonymous report by an anonymous source that Pentax is developing an APS-C DSLR geared toward video shooters. About time, should have done this six, seven years ago. Um, 
There's no spec details on it. There's no confirmation from Pentax. It could easily be a rumor. It could easily just be a misinterpretation. It could be that their next camera, their next APS-C, which is supposed to be announced this year, maybe even for sale this year, but that we've heard nothing about in months, uh, may be good for video. There's not much, but what I will say is that uh, getting a Pentax camera that can shoot quality video, especially if it's a full frame camera that can shoot really high quality video and has a screen like the K1 does, would be such, such a huge step forward for the brand and um, would make it a really solid camera just, just to shoot with and to use. Honestly, when I go out and do my hike logs now that I when I take my K1, I take the K1 and a whole Pentax support system, tripod, some Pentax lenses, but then I'm doing the video with my A7S II and then a couple of lenses for it. Honestly, my life would be so much easier if the K1 did a quality job with 4K video and that I could just use it instead and only take one camera. Um, also because Pentax's file naming system is significantly better than Sony's and the files are easier to work with. At any rate, so, um, so complete speculation that that might happen, but let me just say that I really do hope it happens. And even if that mythical Pentax 4K video machine turns out to be an APS-C camera, as long as it's got a really nice articulating screen on it, uh, I'm still interested, though I definitely prefer it to be full frame. And fewer megapixels than 36, thank you. So, at any rate, that's cameras and coffee for this morning, where, um, where uh, oh, also, coming up here soon on the channel, I hope you guys stick around for these, I wrote the scripts last night for the Metropolis and Silver Max All About Films. My last set, nine, nine rolls, nine or 11 rolls, I forget which, of 120 E100, Ektachrome 100, are off at the lab being developed right now. After they get back and after I scan them, I'm gonna finish the script for that and uh, record those soon. I don't wanna promise when, because um, I also still have five more Canon Month <laughs> videos to release and 16 hike logs and nine or something like that lens reviews. Um, so at any rate, lots and lots and lots of different types of content coming out here on the channel. So keep an eye open for that and uh, see you at the next Cameras and Coffee and in all of the upcoming camera and gear related videos. Isn't that right, Stathanbeck? You ready to go for a walk? Do you, no, Oh, my pants were so clean. Oh, dang it. All right, let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk.